I'm Edward Moorfield, publisher of City Business. I'm honored today to be interviewing Alec Ross, the author of The Industries of the Future. Everywhere I travel, everywhere I travel, people say the same thing to me. Oh, we want to create our own Silicon Valley. And the God's honest truth is what I want to tell people is don't bother, don't try. They've got a decades long head start. You know, Silicon Valley in many respects won the internet. You know, they did everything right to position that 30 mile long, 15 mile wide area to, to overwhelmingly capture a high percentage of the trillions of dollars of wealth that was created through the internet. When people say they want to create the next Silicon Valley, I say, no, 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 no. Create the next center for the industries of the future. The internet in and of itself, you know, that ecosystem has already been well established. And sure, there will be internet-based businesses that grow up everywhere that create jobs and wealth. But when I think about genomics, when I think about big data, when I think about artificial intelligence and robotics, I do think that there can and will be more geographic spread for these industries than there has been for the internet. And the principal virtue, I think, that is going to be necessary for this is openness. You've got to create places that lend themselves to imagination, to invention, to very early stage high risk investing. It has to be places that I believe are overwhelmingly welcome for women. You know, I think that any states or societies that treat women like second class citizens, you know, guess what, folks, you are not going to be the HQ uh, for one of the industries of the future. I do think that there have been some cultural norms uh, that have been established among today's innovators and the people who I think are going to create the Google of robotics or the Amazon uh, of big data or the you know Cisco systems uh, of life sciences and genomics. And I think that it's really rooted in openness. You've got to be radically rights respecting and, and welcome people of all backgrounds, religions, ethnicities, races, sexual preferences. I also think that you've got to be sort of uh, as anti-prejudice as possible. Don't judge people on their age. Don't judge people on where they're coming from. I think that the societies that are most radically open and welcoming I, and then lend themselves to the most frictionless communication, collaboration, and commerce are going to be those places that are the headquarters for the industries of the future. You know, today, I think that there are probably, you know, just south of 15 alpha cities in the world, you know, places that are economies unto themselves. You know, New York, San Francisco slash Silicon Valley, Los Angeles, London, Dubai, Singapore, Tel Aviv, Tokyo, Beijing, Sao Paulo. And you know, most of the Fortune 100 CEOs travel the world in a circuit of sorts. Uh, by the same token, there are also beta cities. Cities that are strong, but within the context of a regional fabric. Uh, I think of Munich, for example, as a beta city, I think of um, I, I think of Cambridge in the UK. I think of Baltimore is one of these cities. It's got a strong it's got strong roots in intellectual property. It has good researchers, but it's much more strong as a as a regional player than as some than as a place that people come from around the world just to live and work uh, there and to do business there. What I do believe, though, is that when I think of the industries of the future, when I think of cybersecurity, when I think of genomics, I do think that Baltimore could emerge as an alpha city, as long as it becomes the most entrepreneur and investment friendly place possible. I think that it already has a lot of the cultural characteristics that lend themselves to young people wanting to come and spend 20 or 30 years of their life there. The last thing I will say is that we have to remember that innovation comes from the edge. It doesn't always come from a central authority or from somebody commanding things from on high. And I think that the impulse for control uh, from central authorities, from traditional hierarchical figures, uh, creates conditions that are sort of anti-innovation. I think the 21st century is a terrible time to be a control freak. 
And when I think about those control freak leaders from Vladimir Putin in Russia to you know, dozens of others around the world, you can spend all the money you want. But if you are gonna be autocratic, and if you are not going to allow innovation to emerge from the edge, from improbable places, then you know, you better click your heels together like Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz and say there's no time like the 1950s.